Alright, here we are once again with Douglas Engineering and that's Doug and when today we're going to groove some bearings. Well, most people that own Dodge Vipers realize there's a problem when they take the motor apart with the thrust bearing and what you end up with is dry areas in the bearing and the bearings go ahead and they start lightly peeling and these peelings are very very evident by marks that look like this and marks that look like this in the thrust surfaces of the bearing and there are several different reasons for this first the Dodge Viper comes through with such a gigantic clutch and a very heavy flywheel and this bearing is located dead slap in the center of the motor and it appears as if the thrust surfaces do not get quite enough oil because this is evident on quite a few different Viper bearings We've tried a new solution and it works. What we've done is we've taken a standard Dodge Viper bearing that comes through with either a three-quarter groove or in some cases the newer Vipers will come through with a full half groove and we've made a tool that will go ahead and cut a full groove in this bearing. Now we've also gone ahead and looked into a different style bearing that comes in on a truck and the truck bearing has a much much bigger thrust surface on it which will fit in the Dodge Viper block but you have to go ahead and redo your indexing tangs and cut a groove in the upper half of the block to accommodate four different oiling holes or five with some brands of bearings and you take a die grinder or a small cutting tool and you cut a big groove in the block and the oil from the single line that's in the Dodge Viper block now gets dispersed and it feeds this bearing in either four or five different areas or you can simply drill a hole straight in the center however this has no groove either our idea is to go ahead and put oil on the thrust surfaces of this bearings and what we're going to do may look a little brutal but the only way we can get oil to this surface right here is by bleed by on the edge of the bearing or what we do is this we cut a flat groove in it with a file all the way across it and this allows oil to go ahead and run in two directions and we do it on both sides of the bearing when you get done measuring this two passes with a coarse file maybe three will give you a groove of fifteen thousandths of an inch together this groove and this groove gives you about a thirty thousandths of an inch shot for oil to go ahead and shoot to these thrust surfaces right here now in order for us to put a full groove bearing in this I've taken a tool that was come off of a prototype drawing through Chrysler and I've made a a bearing grooving tool and how this tool works is we take our first half of the bearing and we insert the bearing down into the bearing grooving tool with all of our tabs and we lock this bearing in place and we've taken this hole that's in this bearing grooving tool and we've made this instead of exactly three inch and a hundred thousandths we've given it about an extra four to five thousandths of clearance so it's really not putting a crush on the bearing we're relying the tabs to go ahead and drive the bearing in this tool so these little tabs that we go ahead and we've cut out the Dodge Viper has two tabs on one side of the engine here and here so when these mating surfaces go together both tabs are the same however the truck motors they're a little different if you use this wide thrust surface you have to go to your block and recut a different tab because it's on the opposite side of the motor and the truck bearings also have their tabs facing each other so when this bearing goes in you're dealing with a tab situation like this versus the two tabs that are on the Dodge Viper bearing where they face each other and they're opposite one another such as this okay well but you see here where this half groove goes ahead and stops you'll notice it goes right between the two tabs that's the way it's going to be on a regular Dodge Viper block so you have a choice of bearings to go ahead and use you're using a huge single disc clutch or you're using a double disc clutch instead of chewing up the thrust surfaces on this bearing
or going ahead and chewing up the thrust surfaces on the Viper crank, we need to go ahead and we need to get oil to these thrust surfaces. Now, this truck bearing has a groove and a bevel already cut on it. And it's evident if you go ahead and look at it down here in the parting line. This is the same oil groove that you have when you take a regular Dodge Viper bearing and you cut the bevel in it as I did. Now, to make this bearing a fully groove bearing, going back to our tool, I'm going to take one side of this bearing, and we've already got it inserted. The second side of the bearing, we're going to insert it into this tool. This is the part where you take your your bar and you scroll past all this and get back to them when we actually start cutting the bearing. <laughs> A little bit of setup. Now the reason these bolts are going in so tight and so snug, the hole that we've made for this shoulder up here on this Allen head, we have given it one thousandths of an inch of play between the shank of that bolt and the inside of the aluminum. One side goes in real easy because you don't really have to line both sides up. But this definitely lines up both sides of the bearings and simulates the condition that the main bearings would have inside the engine. Now what we've done is we've taken the regular Dodge Viper bearing that I've shown you earlier and the, that bearing has a groove in it. We've taken a tool and we've taken the tool out of, uh, made a Rex tool bit. It's called Rex Steel. And uh, it's a pretty hard metal. And we've ground ourselves a tool bit that fits right into this groove dead perfect. And it is at the same angle that this groove is cut. And we've looked at it through light and everything else. And this matches the size of the groove that's presently in a Dodge Viper bearing. Only one half of it. Now this has a, is, is a 
about a 120 degree oil groove. For some reason Chrysler thinks that this is all the oil that the Dodge Viper needs. However, once you want to start twisting the motor up and playing games with camshafts and putting better rods in it and making self-improvements on your own for that magical thing called horsepower, you need more oil. So this modification definitely gives the rods more oil by far. And here's how we set this tool up. We run this tool into where our bearing would lie and we back the tool very carefully into the groove. Now it's going to take a little bit of playing around to get this just right, but with a little bit of fiddling here and there, we can get this tool to deadline up with that with that groove. Fortunately, I can't quite see it well enough. Once we know we've got our alignment reasonably established here, we'll run this back out and we'll lock our carriage in place. A little carriage bolt here will run our taper attachment, locks this and holds it pretty secure. Now we don't want to drive this bearing real, real fast, but we're going to put something called cutting oil on it. It's going to chatter a little bit, but it's also going to prevent a lot of grabbing and biting with the tool bit because that's a, it's a good bit of metal we're taking out. You've got two or three different layers of different types of metal in this bearing and we need to take those layers out as nice as we can and if you notice the factory bearing still has chatter marks in it so the factory ran into problems too when they were cutting these grooves on the bearings and we don't want to have as many chatter marks as the factory had so we're going to take our time and do this a little bit slower. So now our bearing tool is rotating and this is something that you can't see inside of an engine, but you see the tolerance on this factory bearing? How it lives perfectly round on the inside. But you see the irregularities in the making of this bearing? So all things have some inaccuracies to them. And it doesn't make the bearing bad, but it's just part of the manufacturing of the bearing. Now we will start going ahead and running this tool in and hitting the groove and uh, slowly start taking some metal out of this bearing. 